they needed from the tournament. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is a, a great map for ZVP, I think, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just it's so hard for Toss to get out on the map. He, he, they're kind of bottled up in on two bases. The third base isn't even that easy to take, uh, whereas the more mobile Zerg army can just expand everywhere. Mm -hmm. I've, mm -hmm. I, like you said, I've seen Stefano win here countless times. It's all going to be about how Naniwa can secure his third base and do those nice timing pushes against Stefano. The countdown has just hit zero. The game is loading, ladies and gents. Stefano versus Naniwa game two about to begin. I'm so pumped. I am so pumped. I'm so pumped and I'm so blown away. Oh, yes, yes. Cheers. Yeah, on Antigua Shipyard, the biggest threat that Protoss can possibly put on the opponent are the War Prisms and the Blink Stalkers. Yes, indeed. Down here in the kind of 6 o'clock-ish position, we'll call it 545. Uh, the Red Zerg player from, uh, from France, one of France's finest. It is Millennium Stefano. And up in the north position on the 14th of November. Remember, remember. The 14th of November when Naniwa said, screw everything else, I'm just going to practice. And he completely disappeared, came up to second place in Providence. Can he do one spot better here at DreamHack? It is Dignitas' Naniwa. You know what? You know what? Let me, let me try that. Let me try that one more time. Okay. It is, ladies and gentlemen, it is Complexity's Naniwa. My sincerest apologies to Jason Lake. <laughs> Sorry, you know, it's involuntary. You know, the mouth gets used to saying Dignitas Naniwa. But that just means that I'll have to give all my Dignitas cheering over to select. Fair enough. He is awesome, and the Dignitas hoodies are really cool. They're very yellow. And they're awesome. And here comes the first probe from Naniwa. Cross map positions guaranteed on this version of Antigua mm -hmm. Shipyard. And that's just going to make Stefano giddy with glee because he's going to be able to very easily and very safely secure his own third base. And then he can go to either corner for his fourth and fifth bases. Um, you know, Naniwa Day, first of all, Forge expanding once again. This is just what he does, and he doesn't yeah. seem to care what map or, uh, like, seriously, he'll, he'll Forge expand on Zelnaga Caverns. And yeah, yeah and try to make it work. Uh, but I, I just, I'm so hung up on the fact that he really seems to play every single PVZ with some sort of heavy two-base aggression. You know, I, it's one of those things that I've, I've rarely seen him deviate from. It occasionally comes back to haunt him because often with two-base aggression, right when you decide to go take your third, you suddenly can't do much of anything for a long time. Yeah. I mean, if you imagine going for that six warp gate push in the last game, did a lot of damage, and then what happened? Naniwa doesn't have Blink, he doesn't have Observers, he doesn't have Immortals, he doesn't have any air units, he can't do much of anything except walk to the opponent's base and try to attack, which Stefano is more than prepared to deflect. So it becomes very, very awkward. So if Naniwa does something like goes for Blink aggression or DT aggression, he'll have a much easier time transitioning. Sure, sure, sure. But I mean, I really wonder, you, you already said, you know, he delays his Robo quite a bit uh, very often. Do you think some kind of Roach Burrow play would, uh, would, would fare well against what Naniwa has been showing us? Well, the danger with that is it absolutely would fare very well. Naniwa would have a little bit of a struggle bear time dealing with that, but if Naniwa does anything even slightly different, mm. the Roach Burrow play is extremely weak. So That's you right. either need to know exactly what your opponent is doing, or you're doing an extremely risky play by Stefano. And I don't really think there's a good way to know what's happening in Naniwa's base. And we'll do this giant black hole, especially considering that right back here is normally where those tech structures hide. Super duper, incredibly fast third base here for Stefano. Uh, four minutes and 30 seconds, and it is already down. Uh, he had to have cut quite a few drones for that, and we can see that he has, in fact, cut some drones, 18 drones to 23 probes right now. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I, I even love how Stefano amazingly seemed to figure out how to get another queen in there. Yeah. Generally, if you get that second queen up, you have to wait until about five minutes to plant that hatch. Very nice play there by Stefano. He does have just two lings out, both of whom seem to be hanging out here behind this mineral patch. Oh, nope, there's the other one chasing a probe. Mm. Stefano is going all macro mode. Naniwana has thrown down that proxy pylon once again down here in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, so he could uh, feasibly warp in off of that and do something kind of kind of fun. That's, that's sort of way out of position, though. It's going to be hard for him to reinforce mm -hmm. an attack on the third using 
using that pylon. Um, anyway, up here in the natural at Naniwa, we can see Stefano is just <laughs> being as annoying as he can be, trying to uh -oh. run sling. He was going to say, all right, cannon shot to the face. Time for me to get out of here. So here's the probe chasing the ling, and down here we have the ling chasing the probe. <laughs> Nice little roll reversal happening. Certainly, oh. certainly. Once again, we've got the Chrono Boosted plus one and uh, Zealot or two coming out for uh, Naniwa. Stefano's third base is done. Sitting on a small supply block here, a little bit uncharacteristic of Stefano, but mm -hmm. uh, that Overlord going to be coming out here in just a few seconds so you can get back into macro mode. We see the plus one attack upgrade, and I love this play by Naniwa. One of the most underrated transitions is just getting plus two attack quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, Blink, absolutely great. Speed Zealot Archon, another great way to play, but just getting plus two means that suddenly Naniwa is starting to gain more and more momentum. Just the ability to chrono boost means he can leap way far ahead in the upgrade battle. Oh, so many drones being built at once for Stefano. We had just, just a second ago 11 drones on the production tab. They have been starting to pop out. 50 workers now for our Zerg player, 41 for Naniwa, who is uh, spinning his chrono boost on things that are not probes. As the uh, Overlord is poking here into the main base of Naniwa, we see uh, a couple of gateways, so a little bit of a read here. Actually, Naniwa's warp gate's quite far off, so Stefano's going to get an excellent scout. This Overlord might even, ma yes, he does, spot the Twilight Council. Now, uh, that's going to make Stefano real suspicious. He sees the Twilight Council, and wait, it's not doing anything? That must mean Dark yeah. Templar tech. I mean, as it turns out, the main reason will end up being that plus two. If Naniwa does anything any different, that's going to be very weak. Naniwa tried to poke up with a couple of these zealots to no avail, and we do see, ooh, there's the Dark Shrine going down for Naniwa. Yeah, cool stuff with the Dark Shrine. I, you know, I like DT plays. I think this is a little bit later than the more typical DT openings that, uh, that are out there. Uh, it's not like DT expand, for example. It's expand and then have DTs out by nine or ten minutes. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't see these uh, Dark Templar doing much in the way of denying expansions, but they are going to give a little bit of map control back to Naniwa, and it'll also allow them to start pumping out some Archons. A big Zealot warp in down at the bottom of the map. Oh, here comes Naniwa with the big push. He's going to be heading up towards the third base. It is not the speed of the reinforcements. It is the fact that this angle is very, very surprising for Stefano. He sees the push, and he is going to be doing the run around to Roo. Look at him already oh. queuing up the Queen. The Spore Crawlers take taking a lot of damage. There's the Overseer planting down now for Stefano, who obviously already has that layer tech up, and it looks like a couple drones get caught in the pathfinding, end up dying nearly immediately. And look at this, while all this pushing is going on back in home base, we have a Warp Prism and the DT tech coming down as well. And there is no detection in Stefano's main base. He could get caught completely off guard by this. Uh, the hatchery at Stefano's third, probably not going to fall here. Roaches and drones coming out to help. Uh, nice control by both of these players. Uh, but ultimately, there's just not enough stuff here to, uh, to kill off that hatch. Only seven drones dying, but what's important here is that uh, Naniwa has bought himself uh, the time to get this Warp Prism out, and he's got a lot of tech in play that could be really annoying for Stefano. It looks like it's the Sentry drop, a little bit of Sase styling coming up. Stefano now beginning to hop into aggression with all his units in that unit counting station, still up at 61 drones. Queen, very attentive to those hatcheries, making sure to continue to vomit all that larva. But here comes the push. This could be devastating as he begins to warp in and force field. Yes, indeed. It will probably be a DT warp in. No, Zealots, actually. So, uh oh. Uh, Stefano still has no idea that the DT tech is in play. There's a bit of a counter coming up here into the main base of Naniwa. Only a single immortal there to defend A9. Uh oh. It looks like the main layer is under a little bit of pressure. DT coming in the front. A big attack does sweep around and manages to start picking off that oh, immortal. It is falling down. Fall. The third base is coming up for Naniwa, but here comes the Dark Templar playing. It looks like Stefano is not going to be very prepared. The main layer is being target fired by Naniwa. Uh, yes, the lair is absolutely going to fall. No, it's not. So the roaches Ooh. do manage to clean it up. The, the natural expansion in Naniwa's base, though, that is going to go down. Oh, Stefano with a great counterplay. Again, showing the strength of roaches in any amount of number. And it looks like Naniwa will spot this. Fourth base attempt by Stefano. Stefano's managed to successfully deflect that one Dark Templar as well. The Overlords trying to just huddle up for warmth in this cold ZVP. <laughs> Uh, yes, this fourth base absolutely going to get denied. The drone is going to sneak away, though. Or is it? No, I guess it's going to not. Or it is. It is. The drone did get away, denied. There he is. There's the drone. But, uh, yeah, continued aggression here from Naniwa. He's going to go try to drop once more into the main base of Stefano. He really wants to kill that layer, but there are so many roaches there. Whoa. Almost the sacrificial sentry. Stefano is relentless with these expansions, and right now, uh oh, Stefano spotted the one running expansion for Naniwa. Naniwa doing a little bit of long range mining, but 
these probes remind me a lot of Lemmings in the original 1980s game. Oh, I loved that game. That is such a great game. It has a good soundtrack, too. We do see it looks like all the Zerglings and Roaches starting to spring forward. Uh -oh. oh, Stefano's just going to go straight for the main. Oh, probes. Man. Oh, no. Taking some massive hits. Yeah. Uh, it looks like Stefano's actually in just demanding control of this game right now, Day 9. 130 supply to, to just 80. Uh, Naniwa still hasn't rebuilt his natural. Uh, he is... I think he should be able to clean up this little push, but he's just falling further and further behind. Still uh -oh. no uh, hive tech from from uh, from Naniwa or from Stefano. Ooh, that layer looking suspiciously low on health. This warp prism kind of teasing intention. Yes, indeed. Uh, more units continuing to stream out here for Stefano. He loves his roaches. He loves his drones. Uh, 11 drones in production right now. That's going to be, of course, to populate the fourth base down there in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Naniwa has stabilized a little bit here, uh, but Stefano is still thirsty for some, uh, for, some more, for some more battles here as he goes to knock down the, the rocks in the back of Naniwa's third base. And uh, again, with two immortals and some sentries, I feel like Naniwa, if he controls it correctly, should be able to defend that. Ooh, more war oh, prison play war in the bottom prison left. Play. Fantastic job right there by Naniwa. Spotting that expansion, immediately answering with the warp prism. This is the true strength of Protoss mid in the late game, the ability to warp in at any location on the map. What can Stefano do? There's really no good answer to the warp prism for Protoss. Yeah, I think uh, I think mutas are a great way to play against it, and uh, obviously corruptors can help. But but you're right with the with the kind of ooh, ooh pretty solid force fields here. These roaches are going to get some drone uh, probe kills certainly, uh, but uh, it's going to be a bit of a loss here for Stefano. I don't think he cares. Look at the supplies: 150 to less than 100. Gosh, and now the gold base going down by Stefano. This absolutely silly amount of expansions. More roaches being rallied in great positions. Spine crawlers, spore crawlers, overseers littering the map. Naniwa just now regaining control of his own third base, and a single DT does manage to take out the bottom left. Yes, indeed. Uh, so Naniwa really wants to get this uh, get this layer taken out, but Stefano has been so so wary of the the, the potential for this war prism harass, leaving about five roaches, six roaches, and an overseer there. Uh, looks like Stefano just now going to add a spore crawler and a spine as his defense mechanism there. Gold base is coming up for Stefano. That's going to supercharge his income in a big way. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it is just a regular blue base, but I mean, the gold base centers oh, I do think yeah. are are are, are Keep missing critically that. important on this map. I mean, if you control those, then suddenly there's not really a comfortable spot for your opponent to begin working towards. He just kind of has to commit to the center. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Naniwa, man, he's got such a small army, and he is being a little bit careless with it, in my opinion, pushing out just a little bit. This stalker is going to come forward and kill a Zergling, but then I'm not even going to kill the Zergling. Hello, Roaches. Well, at least he shot the Zergling. <laughs> Do you uh, see that 1DT starting to try to sneak up? Naniwa has a very clear goal, wants to try to take this out. Naniwa's been doing a great job of denying all the expansions at the bottom left area. The gold now looking a little bit vulnerable. We see the Burrow tech is coming. These roaches actually do have this rapid regeneration upgrade, the tunneling claws down, but or that was being researched earlier, but of course Stefano did not have Burrow done. Yep, uh, annoying little DT play there by Naniwa, but uh, I do feel like, where is the Overseer? Sure, there, there comes an Overseer, so that uh -oh, DT. Uh-oh, uh-oh, it's target firing. Ooh. Looks like he might just try to warp in, and oh, this would be a huge win if he can eat. Oh, 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 Three hit points remain. One more shot would have done it. But uh, Naniwa managing to save that Warp Prism a little while longer. Look at this army for Stefano. Roach Hydra in a big way. Maxed out is our Zerg player. Uh, Naniwa has three Colossi and quite a bit of force field saved up. But this is a scary, scary army for Stefano. Yeah, and Stefano, how does he end up pulling Roach Hydra off so well? Aggression, aggression, aggression. Once he hits Max, he's going to leap right into action. It looks like he's sprinting forward, trying to find some sort of opening in the main base. What happened, Stefano? Oh, <laughs> it, oh Stefano actually freeing ah, up some food for the okay, Corruptors. Okay, I can see it. He uh, doesn't have enough gas to make as many Corruptors as he wants, but we can see him hammering out six now, and uh, as soon as he has the money, I'm sure he'll make a few more. Uh, 188 supply for Stefano, 153 for Naniwa. Uh, looks like Stefano, has he forgotten about these Hydras down here? Right over here by the third base. He may very well have forgotten about this gigantic pack of Hydras. This is going to be so, so blunderous if these end up getting uh, left behind. Let's see, a lot of Hydras to have out of your main army, but uh, I, I'm... I have a hard time. Yeah, there they go. So, uh, so Stefano on top of it. Uh, once again, more corruptors on the way out. Stefano closing in on a max again. Uh, still no hive tech. Surprises me that Stefano hasn't go gone ahead and morphed that hive, if for no other reason than to get some more life on that hatchery. 
Uh, well, interesting fact, I was actually testing this more. You actually do not get the bonus health boost from it. What? Yeah, it's proportional to how much health it has beforehand. So if you have like a two hit point layer and you up, up into a hive, it becomes like a five hit point hive. It's super tragic. Just That's a, crazy. There's, there's nothing you can do. You just have to sit there and bleed for a very long time. <laughs> Uh, Naniwa looks like he wants to make a fight happen here. He's at about 180 supply, and with uh, only 64 workers, that is a pretty large Protoss army. Uh, he has control of the center of the map, and that means Stefano cannot mine here. Naniwa has essentially forced Stefano to stay on three bases this whole game. Great, great play by Naniwa, who's down to one base just moments ago, has begun to rebuild. Looks like a pair of stalkers are going to go try to answer. Stefano's trying to get the good angle, and he wants desperately to get corruption on all of those big units, the Immortals, the Stalkers in the fronts, and especially those Colossi. Yep, a couple Stalkers up in the top right-hand corner of the screen are going to scout this, uh, this new expansion for Stefano. Uh, drones burrowing there, that's really, really cute. Uh, there is a big <laughs> Zerg army, and uh, Stefano, it looks like he wants to fight, but he knows he just can't take that angle. He's got to be really careful. He's got to spread out. Ooh, there's those infamous force fields of Naniwa. Naniwa looks like he will shut down this attempt of expanding yet again for Zerg. Uh, yes, indeed. Stefano is going to oh. push forward and go for it here. Corruption going down on a single Colossus before backing off there. Uh, excellent use of force field once again by Naniwa. He, is, he never overdoes it with the force fields. He always casts just the exact amount that he needs. We do see Naniwa at 2 1 upgrades now getting shield. Here comes the Zerg army with an amazing arc. We see one Colossus Ooh. down, two Colossus down. Oh, the third Colossus taking a lot of damage. And here comes the mass corruption from Stefano. All the army gets gooped up, but oh, Naniwa, Naniwa. Just has too many units. Naniwa winning that fight decisively. I'm a little bit surprised here. Stefano does remax instantly, but uh, none of the immortals died there, Day 9. So it's four immortals fighting against a Roach Hider army. That's, that's pretty good for Protoss. We see the corruptions just streaming down on all of the units. We see Roaches now coming down out of the main with these two force fields. Oh. Stefano is in a rough spot. Roaches, so many Roaches coming out. Can Stefano macro up enough? I don't know, Day9. 180 supply for Stefano, and his money is starting to dwindle. Naniwa up at about 160 supply, and he's got a bank of cash that he's sitting on right now. Oh. Uh, nice engagement here for Stefano, but is it enough? Stefano has another 15 roaches about to pop out. He has the corruptors again, continuing to just pour more and more corruption down. Naniwa's numbers starting to dwindle, but I still think it's going to be enough for Naniwa to hold on. Unbelievable play here by Naniwa, and he very well may be closing in on a 2 0. The roach Warren is not getting targeted, but it is so low on health. Yes, the Roach Warren will now fall. That's no, that means no more Roaches for Stefano, only Hydralisks and Zerglings. Executor Immortal, 21 kills. A Roaches, Zerglings, Drones, all streaming in from all angles. A desperation defense by Stefano. So impressed with Naniwa's play here at DreamHack Winner 2011, Day 9. He is cleaning up Drones and Roaches. He's got a great angle, blinking around every time he needs to. 74 supply for Naniwa, 140. Wait, 70 supply for Stefano, 140 for Naniwa. Naniwa looks like he may end up losing this remaining stalker force after a very, very thin defense. It looks like Naniwa's attack has been deflected by Stefano, but at what cost? Oh, Naniwa has a whole nother army ready to go. Oh, he has so many warp gates. I count eight, nine, no, nine. That's not an inordinate amount of warp gates, but that's a lot of warp in. Allows him to reinforce very quickly. Stefano all the way down to just 70 supply, and he is broke as a joke. He is trying to do anything he can, and there's the good game. <laughs> Stefano with the 0-2 defeat has essentially been eliminated from DreamHack.